<laughs> it matches perfectly. Yeah. Hi everyone, Joshua Hanlon here, and today I'm joined by Hugh Millington, the founder of Brickset, here at Brickset Towers in Southern England. So Hugh is gonna show us all around his studio, show us some of the builds he's done, some of his favorite sets he has on display, and his organized parts collection. So thanks for letting us come in and film here. You're welcome. So let's start in right here with all these parts. Now one question we always get when we come in and do videos in someone's studio is the containers they use for their parts, uh, like what brand are those, where do they pick them up, because people are always looking for new ways and kind of innovative ways to store their collection. Right, yes, well these are really useful boxes, uh, scrapbook drawers they call them, and they have a special insert in them which, uh, as you can see, is ideal for Lego. So here I've got uh, my basic bricks, plates, tiles and slopes, and uh, organised by colour the prettier colours that I don't have so many of at the top and um, I've got, uh, well I've lost count really of how many I have here but there's enough here to store all the basic stuff and then elsewhere in the room is uh, all of the other Technic pieces and uh, specialist parts and plants and animals and everything else. I like how you maximize space so you've got the walls but then you've also got it underneath the table and everything so you really can fit as many pieces in as possible because that's always a problem isn't it is where, where do you store all these exactly yes yeah yeah and it's all close to hand if I'm standing here building right behind me so that's true I so tend to do quite a lot of technic building now so my technic is underneath the table very close at hand and uh, it works well for me Where's, where's the bin of like random stuff that doesn't go anywhere? There's always one of those <laughs> somewhere. <laughs> oh, the bin of random stuff that hasn't been sorted yet. That's up there, yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah one day I'll get round to doing that, but uh, that's all the system parts that I've not yet uh, got round to doing anything with. So you mentioned Technic, so we can walk over here now then and take a look at your GBC layout. So I think primarily you would say you're a GBC builder for the most part? Yes, at the moment I'm building GBCs and this is my test circuit where uh, I will test out my machines before uh, taking them to display. So how many modules do you have in this loop right here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight or so. It's um, just enough to keep it running and uh, I've got a few reliable units here and also some that are causing problems that I need to test. And this one over here is um, was running nicely at Swindon on the first day but then failed on, on the second so I, I have to do a few modifications to that. And hopefully when we get a few balls through, you'll be uh, impressed with it. Yeah, it's been great to see your work. So for people watching, we actually have a GBC video from the Swindon show that we'll have out at some point. Uh, so you can look for that. And uh, Hugh has a bunch of his modules there along with the other builders. So this is great. This is a nice little test area here, isn't it? Yes. Do you oh. then kind of switch the modules in and out when you want to try stuff? So you, this is about as much space as you have, but you can switch things in and out? Yes, of course. Yes, I've got boxes of uh, modules here, as you can see. But uh, yes, just run a few up uh, at a time, test them out, and uh, check they're going to work for my next show. <laughs> oh, there's your counter as well. It's not on right now. Yes, I can turn that on if you'd like me to. That's uh, something I've added recently, which uh, will show um, as balls pass, it will count them, and uh, also after a minute it will show uh, the number of balls per minute that have passed, which is handy for testing as well because modules are supposed to run at a certain speed so I can check what speed they're actually running at and uh, check their end specification. So. And so this is all GBC as well in these crates here? Yes it is, yes. They've just come back from the Swindon show and uh, I'll probably take most of them out that I ran at the show and clean them up and what have you because uh, the balls do make uh, a lot of mess as they go around. <laughs> they pick up dirt from the atmosphere and what have you and bits of filth and dust and what have you will uh, eventually clog them up so got some more sorted parts these are fancy wooden drawers here yes I do these are Ikea drawers and this is uh, the stock that won't fit in the drawers the small drawers over there so this is uh, we're looking at small plates of course over there Technic uh, beams in this one and uh, we can't pull that one out but uh, that'll be the, uh, the small small bricks so yes they're all nicely sorted there and uh, how many years worth of collecting would you say is like kind of these parts represent here? 20, something like 20 <laughs> years or so, I guess. Yeah, that's yeah. impressive. So I think you've had uh, time to build up quite, quite the nice collection. <laughs> yes, yes. So then over here on this side, we can see what, one of, how many of these cases do you have now? Yes, I have three of these cases. Yeah. This is uh, something I've recently reviewed at Brickset for displaying collectible minifigures and uh, they are ideal. 
plenty of room for them all and um, every figure will fit even Medusa who is quite a big one she will even her tail you can just about get her in so uh, unlike many cases where you have to leave the big ones out because they don't fit you can actually get them all into the into here and the white looks really nice it just I think is a really nice way to present the minifigs so all the different colors and everything show up nicely yes do you pretty much go out of your way to collect every uh, minifigure series? Do you try to collect them all or just I do, the... yes I do and fortunately we get sent a set by a box by Lego for review purposes. So well there you go, <laughs> that works well. <laughs> Chris will of course keep one set for review and often then he'll send me a, 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 a set of uh, 16 from the box so that uh, saves me having to buy them. No, perfect. Yeah. So then we move over into your first kind of glass display case here. So what, what are some of your highlights or some of your favorites that we have on display? Yes, I have a three IKEA Billy bookcases. Uh, the wide one, which unfortunately I don't think they make anymore, but ideal for Lego. Looking slightly cluttered in here now, I need to have a good sort out. But uh, here you can see I've got a number of uh, custom um, <coughs> minifigures that uh, people like to give out at uh, show Scareback, I came back with one or two new ones. It's always nice to exchange them for uh, either 1x8 bricks or the brick set minifigure. We can uh, remove this as Umgabot tile, that doesn't need to be there because this is a much better shot, the brick set, uh, interviewing Niels there, I think that's, uh, that's very nice. Yes, we had the opportunity to interview him at the uh, press day in uh, February in uh, Bilan, so that was uh, an honour and uh, yes I think I used that little uh, minifigure to um, illustrate uh, our article. <laughs> and then uh, this this does not look like a standard Lego set. No it isn't no that is the uh, Arvo Brothers model of uh, an alien monster and uh, yes it's a fantastic thing but it's awfully fragile and uh, I'm not going to pick it up because it will probably fall apart if I do or I won't be able to get it back on the stand at least but it does look great, doesn't it? It really does. Yeah, it's a fantastic yeah. display model. While we're here, here's a... Uh... <laughs> to take a brief moment to <laughs> show off the trophy. <laughs> yes, best in show at the Reading Brick Show earlier this year for the GBC display. Always very popular and uh, we had the public vote for the best in show. That's awesome. I think so you also have one up there from... I do, yes. This one was from uh, last year at um, the show in uh, Trondheim in Norway. This was for the best GBC module. And then these minifigs are very cool. What are those from? Yes, that's, uh, I'm quite lucky to have that actually. That's a, uh, a set of figures that uh, was um, given to employees at their recent uh, play day, which was uh, I think a couple of weeks ago. So uh, here we have five unique minifigures. Uh, clearly there's some uh, message going on here with uh, the different um, traits of each one. I don't I don't know, some kind of morale booster. <laughs> Something like that. But. And the play day, for people who haven't heard of that, is essentially, if I understand it correctly, like every LEGO employee has the day off and they just go out and do kind of fun, organized activities, almost? I think that's the case. That seems yes. to be the yeah. idea. This cabinet here has uh, lots of little small models, brick heads on the shelf below, odds and ends from poly bags and what have you underneath. Got the, the micro scale, was that the 60th anniversary? Yes, that was it, yeah. Set. That's very cool. Pop-up books, some uh, Disney. Yes, a few um, idea sets underneath, yes. That is a, that's a great display. I like all the uh, Paredes Decora sets there. They're Imagine great, aren't hits. they? Yes, I'm missing one actually for this year I didn't go, so hopefully I'll get that one uh, from uh, Miguel, I do try and cycle my models. Uh, I'll keep them here for, well, it could be a year or more, I suppose, but eventually they'll end up uh, either broken up or put into boxes. And um, this is my favorite uh, architecture set purely because it's, uh, well, it's a lovely building and it's a very colorful one. So this is the Lego house set that's only available in the shop at the Lego house. And yes, that's, it's really quite a special model, that one, I do like it. It really is fun to look at, especially compared to, uh, you know, it's so much better than that first uh, Lego house model they released, which was just all white, right? That's right, yes, yeah. yes, much better, yeah. And then you've got some nice forma down there, they're very colorful. Yes, the Lego forma. There you go. 
Fiesta Lego former carp in this particular case and then I've also got the skins on display at the back there built onto another body just to keep them uh, tidy. Next to them I have a series of uh, Lego shops. I did an article at Brickset uh, recently where we looked at uh, all the various um, models of Lego shops that had appeared over the last few years and uh, here they are. Four or five of them. Let's see, how, how many of those were publicly available versus kind of exclusives or, you know, are those mostly easy to get a hold of? Yes, they've all been publicly available. They were given away at um, grand opening events, typically. Yeah. This one, I believe, is the current one. Or is it this one? Actually, I think it's this one. Isn't I it? think this you're is, right, yeah. This is the current one. Yes, that's right. That's, uh, yes, the one at the back. The VIP set was a, a gift with purchase at some point, a, a small version of the shop. Lots of great details. They even have the yes, like a brick yeah. wall in the back there. Indeed. Yeah. What's the little uh, micro scale like island built in the back? That was a uh, gift to participants at the um, Trondheim Lego event last year. This is an island just off the coast of uh, Trondheim, and uh, in fact, we went over on a boat and had a uh, our evening event. The Apple evening was held at this uh, castle. And in fact, you would have liked it because it was an older military fort and what have you. So. Oh, wow. That does sound like my type of event. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so that was a nice little memento. Designed, I believe, by the Norwegian um, certified professional whose name I can't remember now, but uh, I think he uh, was responsible for that. <clears throat> and then over here in the last case, I've got a few big... Uh, just a, just a couple of yeah. small things here. <laughs> yes, a few Technic models here that, uh, again, they take up a lot of space and I cycle those around quite often. I've just put the orange Porsche away, I believe, to make room for uh, some of this year's sets. Displaying sets is always an issue. They take up so much space and, of course, you only have limited amount of it. So uh, Right. I think especially yeah. displaying them like you have them, which look really nice because you've left room. Uh, you know, there's so many sets that it's easy to just kind of throw everything on a shelf, but then it kind of ruins the actual effect of displaying them. Yes, I would agree. But yeah, that looks great. Do you have a do you have a favorite there within the Technic sets displayed? My favorite Technic set ever actually is this particular one, the uh, the Klaz tractor simply because there's so much functionality built into it, such a tight space. And it's all useful functionality that you can actually see how it works on, like, on some of the models that uh, they bring out these days. So that one is uh, definitely a, a favourite of mine. What do we have up above that case? There's some more uh, just parts in various pieces Star Wars there. minifigures, I think, up there. Oh, mini, okay. Yep. Here I have my collection of um, poly bags, which is one of the things that I do like to keep uh, on top of and try and get every 3,000 series poly bag. So in, in these boxes is every one that's been made since 2010 quite a few of them as you can see no, that's that's interesting it's not something that a lot of people kind of collect hardcore like that but no you found no. that you just kind of enjoy the, the smaller builds I don't think it's a matter of enjoying the builds it's just that I in, in, enjoy collecting the poly bags <laughs> <laughs> so this is a, a, a few in-store uh, model builds that they do once a month in the uh, brand stores. I managed to pick those up at Swindon recently, so there's some uh, additions to my collection. So. Yeah. So yeah, the trouble is it's never ending, isn't it? There's right, exactly. There's always coming out and um, more and more to get. So. It's like being a Star Wars collector, there's always gonna be a lot more. <laughs> exactly, <out> yes. <laughs> and then over here, I have some, uh, some big models that um, don't fit in the cabinet. The Disney Castle, of course, and the uh, Vesta's wind turbine. And here I have my current uh, treasure, I suppose you would call it. Uh, Megan brought me those over from the US. Those were only available in Target and Walmart in um, in the US. So she brought them yes. over and I collected them at Scareback the other week. So I'm very happy to have those. Shout out to Megan, the uh, American uh, reporter <laughs> for Brickset. <laughs> for when you do a, a set review for Brickset, is this where you would build it? Yes, it is. That's right. At the moment, I've got a few Technic bits and pieces out where well, well, I've been doing GBCs, but yes, if there's a box set to be built, then they'll come out the way and I'll uh, build it on there. I see the dino. I think John's actually showing it right now. There's the, the new Lego house. 
or I guess newest uh, Yes, it is, Lego that's right. Set. Yes, we had the opportunity to build that with the designer of the set in the Lego house next to the oh, real di uh, wow. dinosaurs so, uh, at the fan media days this year. So you missed out on that. I did, unfortunately. <laughs> I like your little brick set build here as well. Yes, I've got a big one over here as well, although it looks to be not in one piece, but I'm sure we can adjust that. <laughs> yeah. There we go. That goes on there like that somehow. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> it matches perfectly. <laughs> yeah. So yes, I've experimented with various scales for my brick set logo. That's the smallest one I think on the table there. The did you design that logo, or who, when when did that become kind of the face of brick yes, set? Yes, I did, and actually that was quite early on in the site's history. I, I can't think exactly when. Probably year two thousand or thereabouts. Wow! So it's been it's been, been around for a while, long time. Yes, yeah. No, it's great. I think it's yeah. like simple, but it, portray, it portrays very nicely like what it is. It's very recognizable as yes. Lego, and it has the prime the, kind of the primary colors and everything, and so. Uh, I think that's good. A lot of times it's tempting to go like super complex with those things and then no one actually knows what you're doing. Yes, and the colours were chosen simply because they went with the blue of the background for the site. So that was... <laughs> this is an IKEA table with an extension unit. I don't, again, I don't think they make this particular one again, but uh, the advantage with this table is that it has uh, adjustable legs. So if I wanted it at ta table height, I could have it, or if I wanted it at worktop height, which is obviously more useful for standing at, uh, you can adjust it up and down. And I keep this bit of um, felt on here, not to protect the table, but simply because it means that you know the parts don't bounce about quite so much and uh, a bit quieter to, uh, to, 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 uh, to build on. Right, yeah, I think that's always a big advantage is you don't have parts rolling yeah. all over and that kind of thing. <laughs> exactly, yes, yeah. So how, how much time would you say you spend here versus your, your office where you actually kind of run, run the site in terms of kind of half work and half, difference? Half I suppose, half okay. and half, yes. Yes, uh, so, yes, building sets up here, writing about them down there. <laughs> there you go. It works out well. How, how do you decide which sets you, you build and review from here uh, versus just kind of whatever catches your eye? or? Yes, it tends to be now. We're quite lucky that Lego send brick set quite a number of uh, sets to review, so um, I could do them all if, if, if they took my fancy. But <laughs> nowadays, I tend to concentrate on technic and architecture and brick heads I like in particular. And uh, yes, anything that catches my eye, really, e you know, everything else I will send off to Chris or, or Megan or someone like that to do the reviews for me. Chris being the expert on Star Wars and superheroes and what have you, so he's a better place to do that anyway. So. Yeah, no, it's always great that some great contributors uh, to, to kind of give to the site that extra flavor outside of just whatever yeah. catches your eye. Well, I think this is a great space here, so I'm glad you could show us around. I think You're it's welcome. lots yeah. of cool stuff on display. I love your little personal GBC layout. <laughs> Looking forward to seeing yeah. more of that from you in the future and uh, beautifully organized parts collection as well. So I think you've definitely done a good job with it over the years. Awesome stuff. Thank you.